Hey everybody, it's Tech here. Today, taking you through Substance Painter, clear up some confusion on um, how stuff is done through Legion Studios and whatnot, um, how they're done. Maybe some people who are watching this outside will get some knowledge of Substance Painter and what you can do with it. So first off, you want to start off here with File, go to New, and then make sure you have your document resolution set to 2048. Select your file new. For this one, we're going to use just our Star Wars Legion Studios Phase 2. Hit OK. And then we're going to have our model here on the left side. And you'll see on the right, we'll have our textures here. Now, we'll have a texture set. So we'll have the undersuit, the helmet, stuff like that. Uh, for those who are wondering how I'm able to get like you know the helmet to go invisible during rendering, because if we go here, it'll actually um, pop back up. And you'll see it there, even though we had it you know unchecked. I'll start right there. We want to go here, change the uh, the material for the shaders. Uh, change this to PBR Metamorph with Alpha Blending. You can go here, make a fill layer. Now, definitely not the most important thing to be showing off first, but um, I think if you guys use a good bit of rendering, you might want to know about this. So we go to Texture Set, add the channel for the opacity there. Go back to Layers, click on that to enable it, and then move this all the way down. Go to rendering, and then uh, boom, he's without a head there. We're actually going to go back. We're just going to remove that, not screw around with that at all. So now you want to be able to put your base texture on here, and then actually start going through. Um, you know, making sure that you're uh, following the uh, wear and tear of the base, and then adding on to it essentially. So with that you're going to find your base textures and we're just going to use these right here. You're going to take them, I control left click them, they're all PNGs and you're going to drag them over here. Here you'll get the import for resource and set their usage. You're going to change undefined, set these all to textures. Now for the import your resources to, I usually set this to shelf so it'll be there forever. But we're just going to set it to uh, current session just for today. So we're going to back over here. Also for the undersuit, I always just... Go delete that real quick, add a fill layer, and then we're going to make this dude completely black right there because that's essentially what it's going to be. So first off, we start off with the helmet here. We're going to delete the base layer, add a fill layer, find the medium wear, and drag it over to the base color. And there you have it right there. We're going to do that for the same thing for the body upper and body lower. So add the fill layer there, body upper, move them over, body lower. Delete it, body lower, boom, there we go. So there we have the uh, complete base model of the guy. So if you want to do just very minimalistic stuff there, you could. If you go to render here, you can also see him. And there he is. We'll jump more into rendering stuff there. But uh, let's take it back real quick, back to the painting mode. So after that, what I always recommend is go here, set it to multiply and just name it base just so you never forget do that for all of these except for the undersuit because the undersuit's not really important I'm not going to be you know messing around with that one in particular we're going to set all these to multiply now i like to have the base be the uh very top layer i don't know about you guys you could do it either way you want to um honestly so but i feel like there's less layers to mess around with you know making every single layer multiply if we just start with the base as a multiply so we'll go here and we'll start off and let's just say we're making, you know, the 501st dude and we're making him, you know, blue. He's just going to be blue. So I always go right here to the polygon fill and I start messing around here. We have here for the mesh fill, which is essentially the whole object. We got it for the UV chunk, which is like those right there. And depending on the model, it'll be different how those pop up. We have the triangle and the square fill. I usually don't mess around the triangle, we'll just keep it to square. Um, and of course it will be how you change your color. If you want to get from the palette, you're going to click this and drag it. It even goes across monitors, as you'll see, moving on to the other monitor. So but we'll just keep it right there for that blue. So we're going to mess that up right there. Let's do like that and that in the bottom layer right there. So there's our not so 501st, 501st guy, you know. Now, if you want to go and add some more wear and tear, make it seem like he uh, got messed up there, what I do here is I go and duplicate this layer right there. And we'll just call this the weathering. And I'll set this to normal right here for now. And then we're going to add a black mask. 
and then we're going to right click add a generator to it I usually use the metal edge generator and then we're going to set this one to multiply and here you can change the wear and tear actually I think it was this one right here I had it reversed uh, no actually I had it the right way so it was right there multiply um, and Did I do that one wrong? I think I might mess that up a little. I think it was the, uh, the the white mask instead. So there we go. White mask, add generator, generator middle metal edge wear, multiply. And we'll just turn that off right there. Yeah, I think was that. Yeah. It's been just messing around with it, trying to get it all working through. Can't really remember exactly what I did here. It's just a bunch of just messing around, seeing what you can and can't do. So yeah, it was here. It is. It was right here. So, um, and you can mess around with this too. Like if we invert it here, there we go. It looks much better. So remember, it is the white mask, not the black mask, uh, for duplicating the base layer. Set that to normal, and then set the bottom for the generator to multiply. And then you have your dude right here. So that's how it kind of looks all scuffed up and whatnot. Um, you guys can do this by hand in Photoshop. It'll probably look a lot better. I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. Uh, then if you were to just do the metal edge wear. Uh, dirt isn't too bad. Just depends on how crazy you go with it. Because then it'll really start to show. So like right there, that's not too bad. You know, but if we start with the base like 70.75, then you can see really just not as, uh, not as good in my opinion. But I think that it comes down ultimately to the artist and their, uh, their taste. So cause some people might say this is perfect. Some people might say, you know, just like that's perfect. And then some people might want to use the metal edge wear and keep it like down here to like that where there's like just barely any color. So it just depends on you guys. Also, if you want to make this a little bit smoother, I think it is the uh, edge smoothness and the... There's one of these around here where you can uh, like make these little lines right here just a little bit smoother if you play around with it so but once you have like a good basis right there even on this layer you can go through with your paintbrush and go through and you can paint it up a little bit so if we wanted him to have like a little design go here to our base color maybe for some reason add some black to it you know like on his cheeks or something so now keep in mind this is still going to be applying the uh, the weathering so that's why if we take off the weathering, boom, just like that. So it looks a little bit better that way. So or if we wanted to do some, uh, some dirt, go back here. Usually what I would do is add another layer. So I'd have the base and then I'd have like, you know, like dirt, stuff like that. I'm trying to figure out where it is for like, kind of like, like a little bit, like a little bit of dirt right there on him on the, uh, on the helmet. So. There's that. Uh, if you mess up here, of course, you can go to your eraser and you can just plop on through and just erase all that. So I always use just the normal eraser. I don't even mess around with the physical eraser. Uh, for brush, I use the paint. I never mess around with the, uh, the physical paint. So here right here is from some smudging. You can work around with that too. So careful with that. It takes, takes a toll on your computer a little bit, as you can see to mess around with so that's where you'll, you'll mess around with it a bit so if done right this could actually look up you know really nice with the smudging um you know as you see like the, the black and blue start to you know get in there just a tad bit so but uh i'm not gonna mess around with it just too much so just smudge it just a little bit so i highly mess with the smudging tool honestly um Usually just keep it towards the number normal brush. I never really mess around with the stamp either. So we'll go back here to our uh, brush and show you guys some stuff on the shelf. So starting off here, the alphas. Um, if you want to throw in like the medical symbols, something like that, the bomb squad. Now this won't exactly have the color for it as you guys can already notice. So let's go back up here and let's like plop it right up there. You guys can still barely see it, right guys? Like, not at all, essentially. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you're uh, if you're adding these things, you might want to just go back here to the top, add a layer, and just 
pop them up right there. So keep in mind of the opacity levels. For stuff like this, I'd highly recommend just go in Photoshop, uh, go in GIMP, um, any of those. Plop it on the base texture, make a duplicate of the base texture, you know, before you really start doing things, and then put it on there. Uh, in my opinion, we should have a um, just a base texture with like an EOD logo or a medical logo on all of them, so we don't have logos kind of like different sizes and you know everywhere. But it's up for the artist's uh, taste, honestly. So some people might want it different ways or even you know different colors uh, mixing in you know because if you're orange on orange you might not see it as well uh, compared to like orange on black or uh, you know stuff like that so there's that to keep into consideration uh, grunges i never really mess with either procedurals never really mess with except for the camos um whenever we're doing like camo stuff i showed you guys textures that's how you're going to be able to have the base color fill for like the helmet and stuff like that hard surface never really mess with those uh for here either skin uh is pretty new it just showed up on my update so definitely don't mess with that filters sometimes might uh, mess with these like fake lights uh brushes though this is like the big one right here because as you can see with the brush it will depending on how much of like a smudge it leaves behind. Definitely like charcoal is a great example here. Um, if I want to add some some scratches, go back here. You know, we might do that. And you guys can see you know, having some lines around here um, on the helmet. So definitely like if you just keep it base without the weathering, it looks horrible. But when you put the weathering there, it looks a lot better. I'll say that. So um just you know just a whole bunch of stuff really to uh, mess around with and play with and um, kind of go crazy with it and just find out what works and what looks good you know uh, particles I don't screw around with this at all and I'll show you one perfect example of why I do not screw around with the particles so <laughs> that's why right there it just kind of goes everywhere it just does its own thing so uh, tools sometimes blur might be useful uh, nothing really else here for this materials um, I personally like using the like iron raw damage um, and when I do them you would just take it and drag it all the way to the top give a second so you see it right there now I go and multiply it and boom now however you're gonna have to go here to the color and make it base white so but as you can see, it's still like, well, the base isn't the same. Yeah. So it involves some, you know, messing around with, honestly, to get it to look somewhat like the base. So you can see just a little bit more damage there on the visor, a little dirtied up and whatnot. So uh, smart materials, these are materials that have, um, like, groupings with them. Like, for instance, the, uh, the fabric. So don't really mess around with the uh, smart materials too much um, when it comes to the armors either because then they'll start really looking funky and whatnot. So go and delete that. Smart mask, same thing. It could definitely help with um, dirtying it up essentially so but i showed you guys the generators there from before and we'll get to environments and all that before i don't really mess up the color profiles like i said i'm not a professional when it comes to this so my advice isn't going to be as good as someone else's but this is just a you know baseline what can we do and like really start getting into it so let's we'll go here and we'll add uh add some blue on his uh like shoulders and whatnot i think that was that the upper so there we go head on the shoulders might want to go like crazy and do something like right here so and then we'll go to the bottom lower down there just add it right here i don't know why i missed that one right there boom so there's our little little file first dude there who has the uh the all messed up helmet so but not really messed up uh, arms or legs there too keep in mind these are going to be three different textures now if you did mess with the undersuit would be four but essentially only messing with these three right here now let's talk about how to get those really nice looking renders all right probably missing something here but we're going to go towards our uh, two last three little last things actually here so we got the renders here we got the dude uh what i recommend 
personally. So we pause this right here, bump the samples all the way up, take about five minutes, you know, just go have a meal, eat some real quick, use the bathroom, get a drink, whatever, let it render um, for five minutes, as many samples as possible. It'll look really nice when you show it off to everybody. Environmental map, I think it was three. Don't quote me on that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, three is a good one. Five is a great one. And two is a good one also. And so, you know, for sizing also, I just try to get it as much as the dude in the picture as possible. Or sometimes I'll just do like a like top body shot also. And as you let this render, the more samples, more iterations are going to show up here. Um, and it'll start looking really nice to show off. So I don't mess with anything else in terms of the EV exposure. Um, if you guys are working on like droids or stuff that is emissions, that glows in the dark, that's when I would mess with it. Um, but we're just talking about just very base right here, nothing too crazy. So... So once you're done with that, of course, you can go and you can pause it and save it to whatever. Um, we're going to go back to painting. Like a couple last little things for the texture set. Always make sure you go through, you bake the mesh map, do it to 2048. Good to go. Bake all texture sets. That'll take a while, so we're not going to do it in this video. Finally, though, you go through and you export those textures. Un unclick on the undersuit and if you guys wanted to go in here actually it'll show you like what's everything that is going to be exported uh, essentially the only thing you guys need will be the body lower base color so that'll go over for the uh, the textures and whatnot um, and so that'll be it for uh, this version here a bit of a tutorial on how I do my things kind of rushed a little bit saving some time um, but this will take a good bit of practice and just figuring out and experimenting of what looks nice. And uh, you'll be surprised because even if it looks like nice here, it might not look nice in the game. And uh, we'll go into more of that for a tutorial in terms of coding it in, how to see what stuff does uh, with Arma 3 tools in terms of uh, the PAs and transferring them over from their default PNGs and whatnot. Um, that's going to do it here for you guys. Hope you learned something. Other than that, have a good old day and peace out.